everybody, welcome back to another land. Please abide in my guys with plus duel. We're doing okay on challenges. Obviously, could be better. Cat got your tongue though. We start as Guppy, I believe. Guppy, but only Guppy's hairball and Guppy's head. Dude. I was made for playing this Guppy run. It was made. You guys like kiss? Oh. I like them okay. I didn't used to, um, and actually there was like a peak, maybe when I was like 19 years old, that was when I was at like peak kiss enjoyment, and even then it was like a 6.5 out of 10. Excuse me, sir. I would like you to get out of my way so I could not lose this challenge and rebuild some form of my shattered morale. Um, it was one of those bands, as a kid... I don't know why. I, I mean, I guess because of the media and, and also their own cultivated self-image. I was like, dude, you can't listen to Kiss. That makes you like a disciple of the devil. And then when I was like a little older, you know, you hear some Kiss songs and you go, people thought this was satanic? I don't know. <laughs> it really makes you think about, you know, the way that things were going, uh, you know, back in like the 1970s when they were popping off, you know? I guess it's just, you know, makeup can, can do a lot for you, but... You know, I want to rock and roll all night and party every day. Like, that's not really much. Of, that's like, in the modern world, you would be like, that song is excessively G-rated. Disciple of Satan? I don't think so. But, you know, there's still, there's a couple of Kiss songs I can get down with. I mean, obviously, uh, nowhere to hide, baby. Nowhere to run. You pull the trigger on my one run. You know it's actually love gun, and I mean, you know the joke by now that the gun is it's not a gun at all. It's uh, well, it's phallus, isn't it? But okay, how's this run going right now? I mean, honestly, what can you complain about at all? Our flies are doing a lot of damage. For enemies that are too strong to be killed by flies, we have the hairball. We wouldn't expect it to necessarily be lights out, but we have the hairball nonetheless. With no item rooms, we will be a little aggressive about this. At least want to get the 15 cents, which we're definitely over. 30 cents is not possible, 25 maybe, but I think you just leave it at that and say that that's acceptable. Um, if we get an orbital, we actually, and you know, no promises, but if we get an orbital, we might consider going back and taking IV bag, just because we can get a ton of invincibility out of it. Um, this is the kind of room that's going to ruin your life. So, as of the last uh, run, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed with the way that the last run ended. I really thought we had a good chance to redeem ourselves a little bit on the Suicide King setup. Didn't turn out that way. You know, all I can really say is life goes on. Well, you know, we take a nihilistic approach, we'll get... Many, many opportunities to redeem ourselves slightly, but so far we've lost on more challenges than I'd like to have lost on. I mean, I'd like to lose on zero. Realistically, that's not likely. Um, you know, nihilism has got some negative connotations. To be uh, nihilistic is largely, I guess, to be... I mean, I've never read Nietzsche because, you know, the window for that has passed for me in my life, but... Um, isn't it like the idea that, you know, essentially no matter what you do and no matter where you're from uh, and no matter what you did as long as you love me? I thought that was the philosophy behind nihilism, but I might be who you are. I agree. If you're in like a... Nobody, nobody wants in like a survival situation or like even in a workplace environment. They're like, oh man, we got a crisis. What are we going to do? Ah, nothing we do matters. That's not what I mean when I say we're taking a nihilistic approach here. We are going to get an orbital here, by the way, which is fantastic news. What I mean is, is actually like... It's just a shorthand for it takes as long as it takes. That's the approach I take to a lot of things in my life, you know? Um, that's why... I mean, I I don't know how many times I've talked about, like, procrastination. It makes me sound like a preachy sort of self-help type, which I'm not interested in appearing as. But, you know, it's kind of the, the spirit of avoiding procrastination is it takes as long as it takes. Like, you know, oftentimes I have Saturdays off, or I've, I've given myself Saturdays off. 
Um, I get my homework assignments Friday night. Class ends at 9 p.m. Go home, cook dinner, go to sleep, wake up, have some coffee, do my assignment. You know why? Well, it, first off, it feels great. It's still Monday today. I've been done my assignment for two days, and it's not due for another two days. Secondly, if it took five days to do it, thank God I started it on the first day instead of starting it later, you know? I just, uh, you know, I go to a, a school where, like, if you're in the full-time program, it's a lot of work to the point where people are like, I'm concerned about what to, you know, how am I going to handle it? And everybody always gives, like, the same advice. I'm in the part-time program where I take one class per semester and it's the easiest thing in the world um, well it's not the easiest thing in the world I mean they're you know still tough assignments and stuff like that but you know it scholastically it's not that difficult to do well when you only have one class to focus on but um, you know people are always like time management time management time management Dude, it's not even time management I don't know time management is putting it in like a it's putting a, a hoity-toity label on it that makes it sound like some kind of eldritch science it's just really doing your work before you play. Here's the thing, you know, I'm not really a work hard, play hard sort of guy. I'm like a work a lot, play as much as I can sort of guy. And I'm okay with that. I like it that way. Tell me why... Okay, so we're doing a lot of Backstreet... Wait, yeah, that's a Backstreet Boys reference. Obviously, I want it that way. I was thinking about the As Long As You Love Me. That was like a slightly earlier Backstreet Boys tune. Anyway. What was I going to say? Whew. It's just doing your work before you do the the fun stuff. And then you probably end up doing more fun stuff because you're not worrying about the work. It's the same amount of time overall. Like, you only win by doing it. Try to get myself out of that ha habit. Especially now that I'm playing like a mindless uh, games as a service game like NHL... 19 where EA I can't defend I'd like I think NHL 19 is a good game uh, And I probably played way too much of it on the stream, but You know, I understand you know business wise. It's not really a good choice, but I Can't really defend the game except that as far as NHL games go you have literally one choice and they did okay this year relative to last year, but as a company It's hilarious uh, EA released a pack this weekend that costs 110 Canadian dollars and you're like oh what does it have every card in the game no it has like one guaranteed legend card that would be amongst the best cards in the game but essentially not only is it pay to win but you're not even really like winning you're kind of just paying and people are like you're destroying the industry no um well like maybe but hey I'm spotlighting a lot of good games as well. Everyone's got like some guilty pleasure games they play, you know? Maybe? I don't know. What was I saying? Oh, right, time management. Not This is, this is a preachy episode, not a games industry episode. Um, hold on, let me see what we got here. A theme makes sense. The m mark does not at all. You know, now that I got NHL and I've been playing, you know, maybe like 90 minutes a night, an hour every other night, something along those lines. You know, I find myself sometimes being like, I'll just play one game, then I'll do my homework. It's a bad habit. Because then, you know... Again, your homework takes X amount of time anyway. If you just do it instantly, you actually have more fun in your leisure time. Because you're not worrying about the fact that, oh, I better make the most of this one because it's the last one. But Anyway, I digress. I'm getting preachy. I don't like when people tell me I'm ruining the video gaming industry because I purchased an EA Sports game. It's very offensive to me. Because I also... You know, it's a... I'm... Lazy is not the word that I want to use, especially after the previous rant. But whenever you see something on the Tuesday show, there's like an 80% chance that I bought it. Real talk. And I'll explain to you why. I feel weird about the fact that, you know, for some of the indie games that get played on the show, you know, I'm trying to think of the right way to explain this. Because it, it would come across as braggadocious if you did it in a, if in an, uh, what's the word, an ungrateful or sort of like ignorant sort of way, an inelegant sort of execution. I feel weird about the fact that I may make 
more off of playing the game over the course of an hour than the developer would make off of selling the game from the hour that I played of it, if that makes sense. Like, obviously, it, it's not absurd that my work benefits me more than it benefits somebody else, but when you consider the fact that there's, you know... That was so lucky there. That there's... Somebody else's intellectual property I'm essentially piggyback, uh, piggybacking off of to make my career. It's like radio, right? Like, in radio, how do you think it works? Do you think that the radio stations pay the artists to play their songs? Or do you think that the artists let their songs be played for free because it sells more copies of the record? It's always something that's interesting to me because the way that it works on the streaming side is for the most part, and I don't mean entitled in a bad way necessarily, but streamers feel entitled to review copies because they're like, I'm gonna do some promotional work basically, I'm gonna sell your game for you, so it only makes sense that I get review copies. Don't get me wrong. Usually before I play a game, I do check my inbox and I go, hey, is there an email with a with a review copy in here? Because if so, I mean, I'm not a sucker. <laughs> I don't want to pay for the game if I literally have a free copy sitting in my inbox. But if it's like, ah, I'd have to email the dev and they might not get back to me for a couple hours because, you know, they're doing other stuff that's way more important, like bug fixing, etc., etc. I'm like, you know, let me pay 20 bucks to buy it myself. And I, I'm, it's lucky... Or I'm, I'm lucky that I have the luxury to be able to do that, to be honest with you. Because for a lot of, you know, streamers and YouTubers, the, the numbers probably don't make that work. But it just helps me feel like more, like I'm a copacetic part of the industry and the whole thing. So yeah, I'm saying that I'm not part of what's killing the industry because, I mean, there's like three degrees. There's streamers who will buy a game, play it, make money off of it for two hours and then refund it. That's like, <laughs> I don't really like that. Some situations might be relevant if the game is non-functional. Even the culling too. I think that's a situation where they basically betrayed their customers and, and perhaps even lied to them. I didn't even refund that because I was like, hey man, the game is like 25 bucks. I made more than 25 bucks off of streaming. That feels weird. It's like, you know, buying gas, driving to work, and then being like, the gas didn't work. And it, the metaphor doesn't really make sense. So we're going to do another challenge, obviously, over the course of this episode. That was extremely easy. Um, mostly because we got the... The, uh... Cuba meat. And then there's streamers who are like, Ah, I'll play it if you give me a gift uh, or review copy. I don't know why that sounded so weird. It's like I became Scooby-Doo temporarily. Also, uh, I think there's a case we made that that's very fair. But, you know, I just... I don't know. I don't like the idea. It's hard to... Maybe this makes me... I'm trying to think of a word that won't get hit by the Google DeepMind language filter. Maybe it makes me low testosterone. I was gonna say a word that started with B and rhymes with uh, snitch, but either way... Hold on. This run, by the way, seems pretty easy so far. I'm happy to hear that. This could be the rare, lately, double challenge victory. Give me temperance, please, as well. We'll give it a shot here. Um, but, I don't like the idea that, like, you know, these indie developers spend, like, two years developing a game, and then I'm gonna play it for an hour, and I shoot them an email that sucks up their time, and I'm like, meh! <laughs> Give me your game, I'm a streamer! I, I'll just pay the 15 bucks. You know, it's like buying the radio license to, to play something. Anyway. Don't even start with me, buddy. I see all the other comments from people. Mmm, $15 for this game? I'll wait eight years until it's on sale for $12.50. These devs are so entitled. I ain't buying the $100 microtransactions, okay? I can't steal my mom's credit card to do it. I'm supporting the industry. I'm just doing it in my own way. <laughs> and I'm doing it not through Timo Solani. Timo Solani. Why do we have... Oh, because it's the second floor. Literally, I was about to say, why do we have 100% uh, deal with the Devil Chance? No Krampus? That's fantastic news. This one only goes to Mom's heart. I mean, forgive me, but we're going to be making pretty short sure work of this one, I think. So far, so good. Video games are weird, man. There are people, and I don't know, this person may actually follow me on Twitter. So I don't want to... Uh, like offend you necessarily but I'm just I am gonna use you to highlight something I think is silly so please try not to take personal offense to it video games as a hobby is something that you know most people do 
with kind of a healthy separation. You know, I do it with a healthy separation. I still, you know, I play double digit hours of video games for pleasure every week. Which is hard to do as an adult, especially, you know, I think a lot of YouTubers and streamers, I, I mean, a lot of them do play a lot of games in their off time, um, for sure. But, you know, for some of them, they're like, I need to get away from these infernal machines. Like, I, I never got, like, some other people have been like, you know, oh, when you play video games for a living, does it sap your enjoyment of playing them for pleasure? No, not really, like, without being needlessly kind of, like, pedantic or really this is a bad faith argument, but, like, they're games? Like, they're designed to amuse? It, different from person to person. Like, I could definitely see if I was, like, a movie reviewer and they were like, hey, you want to go out and see a movie this weekend? You would be like, nah, I hate movies. <laughs> this is my off time. I'm just going to stare at, like, a blank wall or something. Um, but, uh, you know, some people take it to a level that, I don't know if I'd call it extreme, but I don't fully understand it. Like, I'm playing Bully on the Sunday streams, and those are getting pushed over to YouTube if you're interested in watching. Just for, you know, let me get my little call to action sales pitch in there, but... Um, one person replied and to my tweet that said I was going live, and they were very cordial, polite. They were like, man, Bully has not aged very well, I'm sorry to see that. And that's something that, to be honest with you, I might agree with. And somebody who doesn't follow me and doesn't follow them replied and was like, well, it's a sad state of affairs in this industry when a game from Rockstar Games that's considered a classic is, is considered to have aged badly. Really makes you think. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Are you going... Maybe you don't follow me, but you check my tweets from time to time. But here's... I'm just letting you know, Twitter etiquette is like, if you don't follow somebody, but you end up replying to their tweets to argue, it makes it look like you went through the Twitter search function, searching for bully, and then looking for stuff to get mad about. <laughs> and I hope that wasn't the case, because that would be absurd. But, you know, it's just one man's opinion. I don't understand... It, it's like such a, an insulting way to frame an argument that, like... Uh, this person, I disagree with them, and as a result, it's a really sad st Like, it's a sentence that doesn't mean anything. What do you mean it's a sad state of affairs that this guy doesn't like Bully? It's not a sad state of affairs, it's a... It's an opinion. Now, if he was like, oh, I'm not gonna get my kids the measles vaccine. Yeah, then you can reply and be like, it's a really sad state of affairs. That's one. You know, I'm pretty non-controversial for the most part. You know, that, that is one of the things where I'm willing to go in and be like, yeah, that's dumb. But for the most part, there's a there's a lot of room for people's opinions to exist, so... It's like the easiest, but also like least effective way to try to convince people with no critical thinking skills to come over to your side. It's like, sad state of affairs. It's a sad state of affairs when something on the McDonald's dollar menu costs a $1.29. That's why it's not called the uh, dollar menu in Canada. It's called the value menu. Anyway. If that's moving up, then I'm moving out. You think I could be like a comedian's catchphrase? Sad state of affairs when it takes uh, eight bombs to kill this guy. It really makes you think about the state of Isaac, doesn't it? Nah, not really. Yo, deal with the angel. Um, I don't really plan on killing Mega Satan on this run, but, you know. If the mood strikes your eye like a big piece of pie, that's Lamore. That's not how that song goes. You think it's one of those songs that cannot be listened to unironically now? There's gotta be a few, like, who let the dogs out? If you went over to your friend's house and, like, they were having a barbecue and it was like, Who let the dogs out? You'd be like, sick dude, nice ironic playlist. And they'd be like, what do you mean ironic? I just love the Baja men. You would be like, we have to get you some help. Because it's a sad state of affairs when a grown adult likes listening to the Baja men. Go ahead. Come here. I'm going to get them all at once. Watch this. Group them. Group them. Group them. Group them. It's a group. Okay, you know what? I've given up. You don't need the gauze yet. I mean, this is... You can look at this run for yourself right now. This is an extremely easy win. It's not plausible we lose. I think.
think. I don't, I don't envision us losing on this. I, I have a hard time imagining how it could happen. This challenge, you know, in terms of the annals of challenges, which ones are the most difficult, which ones are like the, the easiest, etc, etc. How could you look at this one and be like, this one's dangerous? Literally, it's like, hey, what if you started with Dr. Fetus? <laughs> the challenge is one item, which is fine. It makes my life a lot easier here, and we've been having some, you know, not truly uh, exceptional runs, so... We didn't get hit on the way out. It's been happening a lot lately, and I don't know why. What? It's a card. I mean, if I'm leveling with everybody, the, the only card I really want, really desire to see, because there's something that would be good... Oh is, uh, well, we can use the Hermit. The Gaz is doing nothing for us right now is the thing, but... We want the Emperor card. Because at this point, this run is, like, set in stone. Oh, almost walked right into that. Ah, oh, right, right, right. Hurt myself. Lucky me. I mean, if we really wanted to be... Kind of scummy about this run. We could just bomb our way through every single room. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it for a number of reasons. I think, honestly, attempting to go fast has caused us a lot of problems. On our challenges in the past, so I think we should just, you know, slow our roll. We are in the depths one, though, right? Yeah. Whoop! So that's the danger. I actually think this is a great run. If I can say one positive thing about this challenge, this is a great run for them to have put right after the Suicide King challenge, because they both have exactly the same caveat. Don't shoot as quickly as you can. Wait until one bomb explodes, then shoot your second bomb. And then you're set. And why not? Basically is what it comes down to. Is that everything's gonna be fine, fine, fine. One second, I just got a cool email. Okay, it's not as cool as I thought it would be. But, the embargo is not, it's at October 2nd. And this video is not going to go up until October 2nd. So guess, or until October 3rd. Thanks so much for the interest you've shown with the Golf Club 2019. We wanted to share a quick tip that tomorrow we're sending out an announcement regarding new additions to the game. The first DLC includes a new PGA course and will be available on October 4th. It also introduces new customer or new character customization options including 20 new Perry Ellis licensed hats. <laughs> the update is free, so boot up the Golf Club 2019. Dude, that's hilarious. What a great uh what a great partnership. I have no idea what Perry Ellis is, but I can tell you, it sounds like a 100-year-old man, so I guarantee it's a popular... Uh, a popular apparel brand for the, the golf demographic. Dude! I want to golf. I have golfed in the past. I'm very bad at it, but... I mean, it's not like the human body was really designed with an innate ability to, you know, swing a, a, a piece of metal at a tiny ball and send it into a hole hundreds of yards away, you know? Like, it's the kind of thing I'm saying, I'm, I don't really feel shame of being bad at it because there's a lot of practice involved. But, golf is so expensive. I understand it's a lot of real estate. A lot of greens keeping. And beyond that, you know, there's another aspect of the business. Like, why is golf expensive? It's kind of a, it's circular reasoning, but, you know, this isn't rhetoric class. I think to some extent, golf is expensive because it's expensive. You know, the people who tend to golf because of the image that it's cultivated uh, tend to be a little on the wealthier side, in particular business people for whatever reason. You know, 80% of the business is done on the golf course. Eh, not in my business, but... Maybe that's none of my business. I'm just gonna see if we can get something decent here. Don't even need Steam Sale. PhD's fine. Um, you know, it's like one of those things where... 
I'm trying to think of the way that uh, I want to describe it here. Imagine if you heard that like a restaurant was the best restaurant in your city. You went there and it was like two bucks a meal. I'm not necessarily suggesting that you would be like, whoa, this is suspiciously cheap. Although two dollars a plate is, is suspiciously cheap, at least in this part of the world. Um, but the place would be so busy, you'd, you might be like, hey, let's go to the third best restaurant in the world. Maybe that's a little bit of golf, is that, you know, the fact that it's a little expensive adds a certain degree of exclusivity for the clientele that chooses to engage with it, I guess is where I'm going at it from. That was not very smart of me. But I wish there was like a cheap golf course in one of the world's most expensive cities to purchase a lot of land. Okay, I get that it doesn't make sense. So I could like, you know, if you drive out further into BC, I'm sure there's cheap golf courses, but do I really want to drive like, you know, 45 minutes to an hour each way just to be bad at golf for a bit? You know, I've rethought this. Forget golf, man. It is one of those things though where like, I could definitely see myself getting into golf as I get older. Not like I don't want to play on the PGA Tour or anything like that, but, you know, I want my life, and it's going to be hard because he has a net worth of like $700 million, but I want my life at 55, 60, 65, 70 to be like Larry David's in Curb Your Enthusiasm, where every day is just anecdotes and then like golfing. That's the Curb Your Enthusiasm is just Larry David's retirement on display, and it's great. What does he do? You know, he goes over to his agent's house, and he's like, ah, I'm bored. And then he's like, well, we gotta... You could star in uh, the new version of The Producers. And he goes, eh, I don't know, it's a lot of work. And then he does it, and he has myriad anecdotes with uh, David Schwimmer and etc., etc. And, you know, that that's what I... That's like my ideal. It's pretty unlikely. I don't think you need, you know, a net worth of $700 million to live that... Larry David lifestyle, I'm just saying. Please, please! Retirement is kind of like a... Well, it's a scary thing for for many reasons. One reason being, you know, much of our generation may never have the opportunity to experience it. Um, but much of the previous generation also has not had the chance to experience it. You know, my, my grandfather worked uh, out of necessity until the day he died. He died on the job, basically. Oh, he was an adult film actor. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Only I can joke about that. The wounds are still fresh. Um, no, nah, not really. But anyway, he is dead, though. Uh, and my grandma, I mean, she based... This is the weirdest thing. Like, this is... Life is very strange. My grandma basically had to work... Uh, all the time as well until their house burned down and also her husband died and then it was like life insurance and property insurance paying out so now she lives like a very modest retired lifestyle but it was like I, I don't want to say it's just for the grace of God because like it was two pretty tragic events happening basically back to back that led to it but you know otherwise she would she would still be working now and she's almost she might be in like her early 70s now I'm so I look, if you know how old your grandparents are, you're one step ahead of me, all right? I don't know, some, a couple of them are like, they're in their eight X's. One of them's in their seven X's, okay? I got relatively young grandparents for a 30-year-old man. Either way, hey, be cool, buddy. Either way, you know? My other grandparents, you know, they sold their business in like, I don't know, 2000, 1998, 1999, somewhere around there. And like their retirement is like, I don't know. It's not, it's not what I would consider my ideal retirement. Here's the thing, you're retired, you worked, it's your money, you can do whatever you want. They just watched like a lot of TV and were like bored. I get it, you know, you dedicate like 40 years of your life to working. You know, what are your personal interests? I mean, they had, like, hobbies, but the hobbies did largely boil down to, like, I'm gonna go to the mall, like, three times a week and just sort of, just sort of hang out at the mall. I have a coffee at the mall coffee shop and then 
I'm not looking down on that. Again, you know, what do you think I'd do with my days off now? That's, uh, retirement's scary. You gotta find something to, like, I firmly believe human beings, you know, they need some kind of, they need a motivator. They need a, a goal to strive towards. Like, take it from somebody that had some unemployed summer vacations. Eventually, you just, like, get sick of it. Like, I'm pretty sure if you're financially in a good spot, and for whatever reason you either quit your job, lost it, laid off, etc., etc., for, like, three weeks, you would be like, this is the best. Like, obviously, if I could do this and also be paid, that would be better. But all things considered, this is a pretty sweet gig. I wake up when I want. I eat five meals a day. It's beautiful. But eventually, you just, like, you know... You're adding time to your life faster than you're adding new interests that you can that can soak up that time, you know? For most people, I think, at least. At least for me, I don't know. That's why I like... It's not like it's on the horizon necessarily, but my uh, my wife, when we talk about retirement, she's like, you better not just, like, retire and then get another job. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I would also like to not do that, but I gotta do something. Like, I don't know. I'm planning, like, on living for a long time. I have no idea if that's possible, but dude, like, my grandparents were born... Well, like, my, my oldest grandparents were born in the friggin' 30s. They're alive in their 80s. And to be honest with you, my grandpa has been overweight since I was born. So my dude has had, like, nearly three decades at least. No, I don't want to fight this room anymore. Of being overweight and he's still alive at 80. I'm not saying that we have amazing genes, although so far that seems like a pretty good start. It's more like, you know, modern medicine is doing a fantastic job. I was born like 50 years after. The chaos card. Thank you. So I gotta, I gotta find something to do or just keep making Isaac videos until I'm 300. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed the episode, if you did, click the like button. It's a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. See ya.